Okay. Hello, Iman. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so glad mm -hmm. that I got to meet you through video today. I could see from your LinkedIn posts, your professionalism, enthusiasm, and whatnot. So I just love to see it so much. Thank you for sharing. Can you kindly introduce yourself to our viewers first? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for inviting me, Jane. Um, I'm Ilan Abdul, I'm an English Arabic translator. I specialize in uh, localization and translation. Uh, mainly uh, specialized in video game uh, localization and marketing. Um, I studied uh, English literature and translation as faculty for Um That means languages here in Arabic. Uh, at Shams University here in Egypt. Um, um, and um, I'm fond of languages since my childhood here. Oh. And I, I just wanted to be like an interpreter. Uh, just ended up as translator. Uh, yeah, and it feels like great. Uh, and later on, I'm specialized in video games. The thing that I really like since since I was young, and uh, it, it's it's very cool. Yeah, very nice, very nice indeed. Um, and you, I I am seeing that you are sharing very very helpful and useful tips, um, including this localization school. I only discovered about it thanks to your post. So thank you again. Um, and some other very nice tips regarding game localization. So you are talking about some challenges, uh, why it is so different from other niche and everything. Can you share some of some of it for our viewers? Yeah, sure. Um, just when I got into game localization, I wasn't, you know, like, um, fond of the way uh, translators translate games here in the airport because it's just it's it's at the beginning of its progress here game acquisition wasn't that popular it was in the past very popular but it's it's all about you know like fan game localizations not like uh, there there was no rules for it so uh it started during the pandemic you know and some years before it, but just booming during the pandemic because everybody's staying at home. So mm, just true. people trying to play games. So there kind of is fun. more demand because of that, right? Yeah, sure. Right. And mm. it's, it's, it's all over the world, not just the airport, but mm. just, you know, it's an international booming in the, exactly. in the game localization. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I wasn't like, uh, I didn't like the way the things are translated or the games are translated because I didn't know that there are rules <laughs> and there are, you know, like restrictions over uh, localization. Mm. So you're not choosing a word or sentence like randomly. No, you have like a set of restrictions that you have to follow and instructions from the client. And you have like a certain criteria for each game or each project. So it's not it's not that funny that that may look like, but it has some rules, um, and and it, it's different from language to another. But like uh, like I mentioned in the in my recent post, that um, there are state of changes, like um, choosing uh, the register. Uh, how how can you like choose a word? Uh, you can say you can say. Um, for example, dude or man, you can you can choose between uh, I don't know like um, anything, actually. Uh, so there are rules for choosing which register to go to. Uh, the age rating of the game, if this game is uh, for I don't know like twelve years old and you know like uh, younger than this, so you you need to. Um, tune down the, the language or the register you choose. Uh, if this game is for adults, you may can, you can choose a high register. If this game is just a casual game or a puzzle like Candy Crush or uh, Uno or any, you know, like simple and fun game. So you have to choose um, a very low register mm -hmm. because people are just trying, you know, like to have fun, not to be uh, I don't know, to have like a historical insight about the game or right. anything. Yeah, there is nothing. Not like to be that. educated. 
yeah, uh, there are some other games like, uh, for example, Assassin's Creed uh, or, um, I don't know, The Witcher. There are some games like that that have to be um, in, in high register because it's 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 in a different era or it's it it has like a historical background or it's written in a poetic language. So you need to follow what's 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 written in the source language and you know the nature of the game itself uh, forces you to 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 choose like a high register. Um, this is one of the challenges, of course. Uh, you know, you may um, encounter like slang language or um, any language that may seem a bit difficult because you will never hear everything from the language you are translating from. It's, it's <laughs> impossible. And sometimes, um, if uh, let's say if you live in the US uh, or UK and um, and it, currently, you may have to translate a game from the past or, or you know, like earlier than that, mm -hmm. and you will never have like an idea about this slang word or this idiomatic expression. So you need to mm -hmm. search about everything that may seem, I don't know, like weird uh, in inside the sentence or this part of uh, the sentence or a paragraph. Um, this is one of the challenges. Um, the, the, I don't know, the humor is a big part of the challenges because, you know, humor is... Uh, is Very not, good point. Mm. Yeah, it's not the same uh, across cultures. And um, mm. if we mm. if we are comparing between mm. uh, humor in in English or in Arabic, it, it's, it's pretty mm. difficult. Sometimes here in Arabic, there are some topics that are prohibited to, you know, like to right. have fun about or to talk about it, exactly. like um, sarcastically. Mm. So you need to consider all the cultural differences um, when you're considering to make a joke or translate um, a sarcastic comments about anything in, in the game or in the dialogues between uh, the characters. Um, yeah, uh, I, I mentioned also the bond and the wordplay. It's, it's pretty tough because uh, everything in English seems, seems very, very easy to play with. Uh, some languages are really hard to um, know, to invent a word or to make, you know, to convey the same, uh, I don't know, tone of the source text. So you need to uh, be creative as much as you can, and you need to, um, I don't know, try to convey the meaning if you cannot like uh, translate the wordplay or the poem, because sometimes mm. it's 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 impossible to do that. So um, yeah, I I feel like we can handle <laughs> some of these challenges, but uh, definitely not all of them. You know, it's it's not easy all the time to handle these challenges. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, some other changes, like including, uh, um, you know, uh, the placeholders and the tags. Exactly. Uh, anyone in the game localization knows how uh, how difficult to handle placeholders or tags. Placeholders uh, mean for anyone in, who's not yeah, a game localizer, it's uh, you know a text that replaces. Uh, a text that will be put like later on in the game, and um, you know this could be like an amount of I don't know money or an item in the game. Um, sometimes a skill, ability, anything. So and you didn't you don't know what is this placeholder when you're translating. You need you exactly. you may find like any simple or uh, I don't know like tag or anything. So. You need to be careful because these things are not translated, and they 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 must not be translated either. So you need to be careful with these things, and you need to ask what if this placeholder, if your language is, uh, I don't know, like a gendered language like mine, and we mm. add suffixes to the word depending on it's it's either a male or female word. Mm. So um, yeah, it's. It's, it's, there are a set of other challenges, you know. 
you need to be creative and you need to take care of everything. You need to ask questions uh, because the main, you know, objective of game localization is to entertain the player. So if you're if you're missing a point or you you're missing anything, mm -hmm. the the main objective of entertainment will vanish at the end of the day. So you need to be careful and you need to be detail oriented for sure. Sure, sure, for sure. So people would assume game localization would be just fun, but it is the most challenging job you could ever imagine, right? So game yeah. tasks were really the most difficult for me too. Like in the past, I had some experiences as, as a localization yeah. employee, but now I don't do it any longer. Um, I only do documentations and it's much more, it's much simpler. So I can only... Um, understand how challenging it could be day day to day day to day tasks um, handling. Uh, another in very interesting topic is because you're working with Arabic language, and Arabic has many different dialects, and there is also modern standard Arabic, which can be an umbrella to all of these. I would say. Um, if you can, if it's okay with you, can you share about, about um, that topic a little bit and about your new monthly newsletter too? It will be covering some of the Arabic languages, right? And the game localization, yeah. is it correct? Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for mentioning it. Um, just uh, recently, I guess at the beginning of this month or I don't know, I can't remember exactly when, um, just um, so many of my LinkedIn connections and friends, uh, I don't think all of my connections are just connections because many <laughs> of them are becoming friends. Uh, they advised me to make like a newsletter to talk about Arabic because I mentioned it in my post. And I find you it have a very bit good contents on LinkedIn. It's, it's, it feels like it should come out to the world more. Because you're covering, you know, I read this Arabian Nights um, article you published. It I just loved it so much, and it did. It contains in-depth information too. So I'm sorry, you you were saying. So they were recommending oh, you to you. do a newsletter. Yeah, they they told me to do that, and uh, uh, and one of my connections is Professor Gofan Dorga. He, mm -hmm. he just convinced me that this is, you know, the right thing. And uh, I just need to make, you know, like a content that everyone should see uh, because, you know, the regular posts are, uh, I don't know, like uh, are lost during your feed if you're following so many people. So I, I just gave it a bit more thought and um, I just decided to make it. Uh, because I don't I don't see a lot of content about Arabic and uh, many times when I attend a, an event or a webinar, people are um, I don't know uh, they 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 drop you know the fact that there are some right to left languages or or there is a language spoken by more than five uh, four hundred million people are across the globe mm. so um I, I just feel i need to do this and um i don't know we um the 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 ideas of these i don't know newsletters will come you know across time or mm. i just need to figure out what i'm trying to write about so the first one was uh, about uh, the mother saying the Arabic and the dialect here in the Arab world, and it's it's I think it covers uh, a bit of interesting information for non Arab uh, for non Arabs um, here in the Arab world. Uh, everyone speaks a different dialect. However, we all understand what are standard Arabic. Mm. It's like we have a written language and the spoken one. The written language is like the official language for everything. If you are reading the news, if you are searching on the internet, uh, if you are having this legal documentation thing, any official paper, it's written in modern standard Arabic. Um, education also is in modern standard Arabic. 
standard Arabic, but if you're speaking with your friends, if you're speaking like in general to anyone, everyone will speak in their dialect. And this is different across the Arab world because every country has its own dialect. And sometimes within the same country, there are multiple dialects, right. you know, the, the, the Northern, the Southern, the within Eastern. Yeah, and sometimes the the people inside the same country have difficulties to understand each other's dialects, and it's it's I don't know, it <laughs> seems like a chaotic thing. <laughs> so uh, I just uh, mentioned that the, the spoken Arabic is not that much of popularity uh, when it comes to localization or uh, mm. spreading your content across the airport because. Um, if you're a customer or a client that needs to um, expand in the airport, you're you're treating us all as one region, like mm. the airport or the Middle East, or uh, I don't know. They, they're treating us like one whole community, big mm. one whole big community. So uh, unless you're targeting a specific country, you need to use modern standard Arabic because if you're if you try to use, you know, the dialect of all, you know, countries in the airport, that would be very difficult and it would be very time consuming. Um, however, this could be like a good, um, I don't know, option if you are, um, you know, having multiple examples in your uh in your content or in your service mm -hmm. that you are trying to get more uh, and more close to the people in, in the airport. So um, if you just want to expand in the airport, like modern standard Arabic is here for you. If you are trying to get closer to your customers uh, in a specific country, you need to um, spread your content or uh, expand in uh, the dialect spoken in this specific country. Mm. Um, I, I, I remember that I also shared about game localization and you know the conflict of choosing one dialect or language because game localization is a bit more like um, a fun way to interact with players and I don't know it's not like an official thing uh, to use modern standard Arabic but uh, like I said it's 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 understandable across the Arab world if you're just choosing one dialect, it will be definitely backfire because not mm -hmm. everyone in the Arab world will understand this language. Uh, in the past, the Egyptian dialect was, you know, like the lingua franca. Everybody will understand uh, whatever you're saying in Egyptian dialect. But nowadays, uh, the things are, have changed uh, mm -hmm. and there are new words that appear every day. Uh, mm -hmm. here and we you, you just need to keep updated of every word that added to the Egyptian dialect mm -hmm. so it's pretty tough and hard for anyone you know outside Egypt to understand the Egyptian dialect um, so it's it's not you know a current option for um, for anyone who wants to have like their game localized in, in Arabic mm -hmm. so modern standard Arabic still uh, the main, uh, you know, the main destination if you want mm -hmm. your game localized uh, in the airport. Yeah, I guess it's, it's, it's still, you know, um, there are some conversations about speaking. Um, the dialect makes you like a bit closer to your customers, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a bit um expensive operation or process mm -hmm. it will consume more and more time and you need to i don't know most of the time game localization comes at the end of you know the process of uh designing a game or uh, i don't know um publishing a game so uh, most of the time it's it's not like counted as um I don't know, a huge uh, phase in the game uh, creation or in the game development. So um, they don't they don't want to have 
much and much time uh, just localizing the game or anything. Just mm -hmm. we needed to be localized because we have this uh, launching date of the game. So everything should follow um, accordingly um, to the date of this uh, launch. Yeah, that's wow. if you want the situation here. Very informative. I feel like I am taking yeah. a lecture from you right now. So I very <laughs> much look forward to your newsletters, how informative it will be even more. So thank you thank so much you. for sharing. So any last comments for your fellow translators or fellow localization translators specifically? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not, you know, like I, I'm not like an expert. I was not, you know, uh, but I learned a lot from uh, the translators community, and I, yeah. I felt like I'm so much welcome. You know, all the people around me are pushing me forward, and that's this is really great. Uh, I just can say that we need just to imp improve regularly and mm. we need to uh, like, I don't know, just be ourselves and be authentic all the time across anything. Because I believe if everyone speaks, uh, you know, the nature of himself or herself, it, it, the world is going to be better. <laughs> mm. uh, and if you are lo in the localization industry, you need to be creative, you need to be uh, detailed oriented, you need to uh, think uh, about the region you are translating to. It's not just the language, you're translating to a region, uh, or it's the language if you're translating to a specific language. Uh, think of the variations inside. Um, you know, the customers or the consumers of your product because localization mm -hmm. has, you know, like there is app localization, software localization, multimedia, um, game localization. So it's, it's, it's a huge, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, like niche or something. So you, you just consider all the differences uh, between people and you need to ask questions all the time <laughs> just uh, sure. to get your message right or to translate, you know, the most accurate uh, translation. You need to follow any updates uh, within your niche or your uh, industry because if we are speaking in game localizations, there is uh, so much uh, of, of updates that happens like regularly and um, if there is like an event or a webinar related to uh, your niche, um, you, you, you need to be there, you need to uh, know what's going on in inside your niche. Uh, I'm not just speaking if you are just game localization, attend anything related to game localization translators or anything. No, it's it, it, it good to attend anything related to uh, gamers in your region. Uh, there is like a conference or a gathering of them. Uh, and I believe like social media channels are, are really great for that. Um, Discord, I believe for game localizers, it's, it, it's a, a really good uh, channel to know the gamers, to know uh, your uh, fellow translators. Um, you can ask questions if you're translating um, a specific game or a, um, a specific genre. There are m multiple channels for that. You can ask questions um, for game localizers. We always depend on wiki fandom for, um, you know, knowing about the games. Sometimes uh, we, it's not, you know, available in your country yet or it's uh, it's it's not um i don't know you didn't like play it uh before so um we have like a multiple resources depending on which niche you are in the localization industry sure. yeah. so uh, pick up these resources try to be resourceful try to be um good as much as possible and yeah. everything will get to after that you know it's always, I believe, in continuous improvement for 
for human being in general. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, let alone being a translator and working in the language industry and working in the entertainment industry. So, so many updates, so many uh, information. So you just need to be better and better and everything will be great after that. Sure, I love, I had the interview with you to, today. Um, is it morning? Is yeah, it here time? yeah, this morning. Yeah. So this this yeah. interview of this morning, your time was just awesome. So thank you so much, Iman. I very much look forward to seeing you around again on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today, Jane. I really enjoyed this, and I I I I'm following you on YouTube, and I just uh, enjoying listening to other translators' uh, stories or tips. And this is, you know, the way of sharing information or mm -hmm. getting improved. We we we're listening to each other, you know, uh, listening to the tips. Everyone is providing so this will make us um better translators and this is what i'm talking about about continuous improvement so thank mm -hmm. you so much and thank you for inviting other translators to share their knowledge and uh, you know anything about their thesis oh thank you so have a great day ahead and i'll see you again okay yeah. okay thank, thank you so you. much thank you bye-bye Mm-hmm. <laughs>